Uh, the breaking news is news we've seen before this college basketball season. The number one team in the country goes down for the fourth time at Madison Square Garden. Chris Beard's team playing without Jemias Ramsey. Team's leading score out again with the hamstring injury. 0-5 against AP number one teams. Part of an 11-0 run, the Avery Benson putback. Davide Moretti. Andre Savarza knocks down the three. Texas Tech, just six of 26 from three. And on the other side, Louisville, just three for 17. Stephen Enoch, Louisville down just one, trying to battle back the fourth number one team in the country this season. Avery Benson, the block, right before the halftime buzzer. Let's go to the second half now. Chris Clark, Moretti. The only returning starter for Texas Tech from last year's national runner-up team, Moretti. Puts Texas Tech up by 11, then it's Clark for three. The hit six threes, I, I think we showed you all of them. Seven points, 12 rebounds, six assists for Clark, so Texas Tech. Their first win against an AP number one team all time. They had been 0-5. And, and a bucket. At the very end, not meaningless because it pushed the game over the 126 and a half total to make it 127. So Texas Tech, who fell out of the top 25 last week because of three straight losses, two straight in overtime, but worked their way back into the top 25. They're beating the number one team in the country. Inside Madison Square Garden, where the top team in the country, Louisville, just lost to Texas Tech, is Matt Norlander, CBS Sports College basketball writer and co-host of the Ion College Basketball Podcast. So, Matt, is this as big of an upset as many may think, given that it is the fourth number one team to go down this year? Um, I don't think it's going to be that big because of that number you just referenced. I mean, we're going to have a fifth different change atop the polls in a seven-week span. That has never happened in college basketball history uh, in any season and, and, and no season to start the season. Like, at no point have we had five uh, changeovers in a, in a seven-week period here. So it's a commentary on the chaos atop the sport. But it certainly is notable. I mean, I'll, I'll tell you, this is why, you know, you come to these kind of games because you figure that something like this is possible. you got a team that made the national championship game last season. Louisville's good, but it's not – it's far from unbeatable here, and we saw uh, why that was uh, on Tuesday night. But I will say this, Texas Tech is celebrating as though it just clinched a bid to get to the NCAA tournament. <laughs> I was just out – I mean, literally five feet outside the locker room uh, as, the, as the guys ran in, the coaches ran in. And Avery Benson, who you highlighted there on the uh, on the highlight package, he was crowd. They lifted him, they lifted him up, and he was crowd surfing in uh, in the locker room. So it was uh, an awesome and infectious scene. The music was blaring within seconds of the first few players getting to the locker room, and a great win. Just real quick, a great win for Texas Tech because it had not defeated a team within the top 225 at Ken Palm coming into tonight. This is the kind of win that, yeah, it can get back on track after having a three-game losing streak, but also it's going to probably be critical for Texas Tech's NCAA tournament resume down the road because the Big 12 is really good, so Texas Tech will pick up some wins, but it's also going to, it's inevitably going to take a lot of losses as well. So this was, uh, this was pretty huge for the Red Raiders and their hopes going forward. Matt, give me one thing you learned about Texas Tech on the floor tonight and Louisville on the floor. Yeah, for sure. Uh, we'll, start with, we'll start with Texas Tech here. Uh, to me, I learned that the defense can still be good enough to beat most opponents in most venues in college basketball. This is not – remember, last season, Texas Tech's points per possession defense was the best in the modern era of college basketball, the best of any team, okay? So it's not reasonable to expect it to be as good as that or even come close, but I do think that Chris Beard – has the capability, the acumen, and probably the roster to have a top 15 defense this season, and that's what he's going to need in order to keep uh, Texas Tech, um, you, know, you know, ideally back in the top 25 or certainly in the top five of the Big 12. As for Louisville, the, the big takeaway has to be that Jordan Wara cannot be asked to save this team against the better teams it's going to face. The, the backcourt has to do a lot of growing here. You know, Fresh Kimball's maybe the most vocal player on this team, but Fresh Kimball... Uh, a non-factor along with, you know, Ryan McMahon as well tonight. So Louisville's guard attack needs to be better. I mean, I promise you this. If, 
if Louisville does not get its backcourt to be more consistent, um, I don't care where it winds up being seated in the NCAA tournament, it's not going to make a Final Four. It cannot play like that, what we saw on Tuesday night more often than not, and think that it's going to get out um, and get, you know, get to Atlanta with the Final Four. So that's by far the biggest concern with Louisville right now is its backcourt play. All right, Matt, no Matt Norlander at Madison Square Garden. Number one Louisville goes down to Texas Tech. Matt, we appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Noah. Coming up, the other half of the Ion College Basketball Podcast, Gary Parrish joins us. It wasn't just Louisville as an undefeated going down. There's another. Stay tuned.